If you're watching this on Moodle or have floated by on YouTube, a very warm welcome. My name is Rory Lees Oaks and today we're going to look at the Johari window of personal development um, developed by Joseph Lufton and Harry Ingham in 1955 in America and it was developed as a tool to help people gain self-awareness and personal growth and Johari sounds quite Eastern and so quite mystical but actually it's no more than Joe and Harry joining their names together to form the word Johari. So let's have a look at the window and the window is represented by these four coloured panes of glass here. Now first of all it asks you to think about the things that you know about yourself or that others know about you and this is called the open area. So things I know about myself is that I'm a man and I have a northern accent and I'm sure those are the things that other people yourselves who are listening to this presentation may be able to work out if you're listening you'll be able to work out that the voice on this presentation is a male voice and also that i'm english and i come from um, the northern part of the united kingdom so that is available to everybody that part of myself is available to everybody now the next area is what's called a hidden area Things I know about myself, but things perhaps others don't know about me. Well, one of the things I know about myself is that I'm an avid drinker of tea. Um, I love tea. I will drink it at any opportunity and as much as I can physically ingest at any one time. Um, and I know that some people know that about me, but I guess a lot of others may not. So for some people who don't know that information, it's a hidden area. I knew it about myself but it might be that others who haven't met me don't know that. The next area is called things I don't know about myself and things others know about me. And I'll give you an example from my teaching career. Many years ago when I started teaching, one of my colleagues took me to one side and said, Rory, you're a lovely man, but do you know that you talk to yourself all the time? And I said, I, I don't talk to myself. And he said, you do? He said, you talk to yourself all the time. And once I'd been given that feedback and understood uh, really how it made people feel, it was quite annoying, I think, for, for my colleague to have me rattling on in the background while he was trying to concentrate. I was able to um, audit myself and um, take some personal responsibility for um, my uh, talking to myself behaviour. And the atmosphere in the staff room where I worked became a lot better. But at that point, until someone had told me, I didn't know it about myself, but certainly others knew about it. And then the final um, pane of the glass is the unknown. This is things I don't know about myself and others don't know about me. So it's unknown to both other people and myself. And we're going to come to how we access that area of ourselves as we move through the presentation. So... One of the things to kind of help blind spots in your personal development, things I don't know about myself but others do, is for them to give you feedback. And if feedback's given properly and respectfully and thoughtfully, it helps people grow. And the example I gave about me talking to myself incessantly was very useful. It allowed me to um, take ownership of uh, a behaviour that I was exhibiting, and it's allowed my colleagues to have um, a better working relationship with me. And that was due to thoughtful and considered feedback. And if someone needs to grow, personally develop, feedback is a wonderful way of developing self. If it's done in a supportive way, if it's done in a way that is, um, I guess, logical and thought through, then it will help you grow personally. And what I say with feedback is if one person gives you feedback, okay, take it on board. You can either take it on board or dismiss it. If a lot of people are giving you the same feedback, then it might be that actually um, you might need to act on it. Um, you might need to kind of consider that if a lot of people are giving you the same feedback, i.e. talking to yourself, then it's possible that you may need to kind of modify that. I have to say I still talk to myself. I'm just kind of thoughtful of when I do it. And in fact, I guess I'm talking to myself now, aren't I, as I'm producing this. Let's have a look at the hidden area. 
Well, the hidden area, which is here, which are things I know about myself but others don't know, are self-disclosure. And sometimes by disclosing a little bit about yourself and sharing a little bit about yourself in a considered and thoughtful way, it allows people to get a better idea of who you are. And, and I guess also um, allows you to, to develop the person you are. Um, sometimes self-disclosure can lead to feedback. Um, and certainly as a counsellor, uh, people have disclosed things to me where I've said, well, actually, the feedback is actually, well, is that you or is that someone else's stuff to deal with? And by disclosing stuff and getting feedback, clients have been able to kind of develop themselves and realise that not everything in their life is their fault. And sometimes other people have to take responsibility too. And again, self-disclosure should be done in a way that is supportive and, and uh, this doesn't feel threatening. And I guess if we're talking about counselling, that's exactly how it should be. Now, the third area, which is things I don't know about myself, but and other people don't know about myself, so it's unknown to either other people or, or self, is access through self-discovery. And I guess that with feedback and self-disclosure, as people start to develop, as individuals start to take risks and chances in their lives, they discover things that they wouldn't have thought was possible in their lives. And um, as, a, as, a, as a teacher, I certainly have given feedback to students um, about things like dyslexia. I've said, I've noticed that your papers, you're struggling with your, um, your, your writing. They've disclosed to me that they have difficulty with it. We've discovered that they have dyslexia, which is self-discovery. They've dis discovered something about themselves. Consequently, with that, they've been able to take steps and gain help to write papers. And in fact, um, a lot of the people that I've taught who've had dyslexia then go on to, to go on to higher qualifications and, um, and are able to access things that were, would have been unknown to them, education that was unknown to them. And it's certainly in my own case, I have dyslexia and I've had feedback, not all of it good, I have to say, in the past. Um, and I've disclosed it, I've gained some insight into it, gained help, and that's allowed me to take the risks in my life, which has got me to the place I am now, I guess. So it's about self-discovery. Now, the idea of the Johari window is to push this open area more open, is to expand it. The more this pane of glass here opens, the more open you are and the more fluid you are with yourself and other people. And I guess the idea of the exercise or the, the idea of using Johari is to make this window as open as you possibly can so that there's very little things that you don't know about yourself that others do and that you're more sharing and more giving appropriately about yourself, that you don't have fear or shame about sharing things about yourself appropriately which, which may help people gain a better understanding of yourself. Um, so that's the Joe Harvey window. Feedback, self-disclosure and self-discovery. And finally, by using the Joe Harvey window as a model for personal growth, we can be more open to ourselves and others. This is important. Once we become more open to ourselves, then we can become more accepting to other people. So it's, this is why it's a very useful um, tool in training, in teaching, in counselling sometimes, so that we can be more accepting of ourselves. And once we accept ourselves, it's a lot easier to be accepting of others. And this is achieved by both giving and receiving feedback, which allows us to access our personal growth potential. If you want further information, well, if you're watching on Moodle, if you click the red arrow, I'll put some uh, notes up and I'll also put a little exercise in. If you're watching on YouTube, if you click um, in, in the box below the arrow, I'll include um, a little test that you can use or a little series of tests that you could use either in either personally or in groups to um, work out where you are in terms of the Joe Harry window. And it's sometimes it's useful in teams or in groups to do the Joe Harry window exercise, gain feedback so that everybody knows where they are and people can work in a more productive 
and more cooperative and more respectful way. So that ends this presentation on the Johari window. And finally, thank you for watching.